Hey everyone and welcome back to Bob's Pet Farm. Today episode number 11, which is the second last one. Um, and then we are done at least with the pre-recorded stuff because as I've said, the final tour will be done when I'm back um, and maybe I have to integrate some other stuff, who knows. But today we are going to build a wonderful little um, high barn and a um, playing ground or playground right next to it, which is kind of cool because I'm not gonna lie, um, that uh, this was something where I started to use some elements from the workshop and I will continue using elements from the workshop for the last two episodes uh, simply as I explained in the last episode in case you haven't seen that one go watch it um, we did discuss about the fact that you know my approach on on not doing everything myself changed a little bit because I you know I used to do everything myself like every single thing um, but then again sometimes it's just not really necessary because there are so many talented people out there and it just doesn't make any sense to build something else um, yourself because you you'd rather make it better yeah there is no chance you make it better if they have done already a perfect job so why not use these things right they are there and I think again the talent is really in the assembly and again um, you will find the link to the collection I used in the description down below so credit where credit belongs and if I forget this because this is all pre-recorded as I you know as I mentioned now in every episode because me becoming dead and so on and so forth not being sure when I'll be back and blah 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 so please bear with me if I forgot mention this in the comments if I forgot this and I'm gonna provide you with the link so that the credit goes where the credit belongs but now we are building this uh, wonderful barn building and I'm quite happy with how it turned out it's rather simple um, its main purpose is to hide away the uh, stuff facilities because we will need them to make it a uh, somewhat workable uh, well not zoo but area you know with the habitats and so on and so forth I'm still super afraid to let people in because I have the feeling it's even way too small for 500 people but we'll see if they will spread or, uh, spread out over the over the whole area um, or not that's going to be something interesting I haven't opened this once there's not even a spawner in here yet I will put the spawner down next time uh, we are going to do also like a parking lot and all that kind of stuff so last episode will be finishing touches um, with basically 100% uh, steam workshop objects I found so many cool objects I couldn't resist um, it's, it's actually really fun um, and we're going to have um, a, a very lot uh, fun with all these things a very lot fun what is this even we will have a lot of fun uh, with all these pieces from the workshop I'm very happy I use them and I'm also pretty happy with this barn because the idea is that this is a lot more modern than the other barn next to it and um, I also used uh, intentionally all this very bright wooden patterns here um, just to indicate it's pretty new uh, maybe even have been done this year to turn this farm into like a um, you know destination location for the kids and so on uh, so that is the the main idea about this whole thing and uh, hence I am very happy that this was uh, uh, possible with all these um, wooden bright pieces it doesn't look as weathered yet I changed a few little tints of uh, of the uh, yeah what is this beige wooden color so that you at least have a little bit of a weathering effect already but it's almost not not, not even a single winter has been passed since this has been built that was a little bit the idea behind this barn so that was pretty new um, to store all the hay and stuff and uh, make sure this is a fun little area for the kids and yeah that was the that was the main idea um, behind this building in case you guys were interested um, or curious to know why and also I'm quite happy with the enrichment piece I later on use in here um, to emulate a little crane thingy um, you know to, to bring the which makes not too much sense to be honest like realistically wise it's it's kind of dumb because there is no opening to bring the high up in the in the higher spot so I should have opened that uh, but I just wanted to have it as a cosmetic thing in there I'm gonna talk about this in a couple of seconds um, so you can see I made like a little high bottom thing here and now as you can see I put all these high bolts in here um, just to to again um, make this a little bit more realistically feeling and as if it was really meant to be a storage and I just deleted that one over here so it's not gonna peek out and then um, 
yeah, I just um, I just uh, continued making some uh, more ground patterns over here because I felt like, yeah, you know what, it's it's not really looking that well. It's not really looking that awesome. Um, and so I decided to build my own little weathered concrete flooring over here. Um, so I think I succeeded to make it kind of look interesting and nice and good and so on and so forth. But it's... Um, yeah, it's something I haven't tried too often, honestly. I don't know why, to be honest, but um, I could have done this a bit more often to, to use these patterns as a very nice ground. It looks really cool. Um, the only struggle I always have is to blend this in nicely. I used mostly rocks here to blend it in in a better way. It works, it, it definitely works, but you need a bit of patience um, to find the right uh, transition. Uh, to make it look good. So you will see now I put a lot of rock over here, change the coloring and then I'm going to use some stones uh, here and there just to make sure that um, this blends in all a bit more nicer, it looks a bit more crackled up to the edges and it's all not that perfect, you know. It's, it, to make things look good in a game like this, you need to make sure that things not do not look too... Um, I don't need, I don't really know the English word. Is it also sterile, like very clean and almost like inch perfect? It's almost like the biggest issue of 3D renders nowadays is still that they are looking too clean. Um, the lighting and stuff is mostly perfect, but this the, the material is too clean. Um, so you can see, by the way, I put the crane down, and again, there's not really a a reason for being there because since there's only an opening down there, um, you would not need a crane. Um, but anyways, in a, in a real in a real barn like this you most likely have an opening higher up and then you can pull these things up and they can be uh, turned around into into the barn and then yeah that's how it is here we go this is the first object actually from the market i put in these two playground elements you can see i'm i'm just putting down all these things and again as i said um i i, I get my my own spin on it you know I, the assembly is is what i was focused on and i'm quite happy how this turned out um, at the very end, but yeah, just to just to mention a little qu real quick again, I think the main issue with renders and uh, you know 3D at this point is again the material is too clean, um, but people get uh, increasingly better at it um, to make it all look weathered and stuff like this. And um, there are some I, I saw that Blender and I think also Houdini have already some pretty cool AI solutions for like weathering effects. So you just basically um, create like almost like a decal and then it calculates uh, how much weathering it should put on and then it looks very realistic so it's kind of crazy um, because one thing you have to always imagine if you create these things and then you would go into make some fake weathering uh, it is almost impossible because then it it, it leads into a copy paste design and then it, it just kind of doesn't feel natural enough anymore um, but yeah 3d design came a long way and it looks absolutely crazy um, I just saw a picture recently on on Twitter my brother sent it to me um, of someone creating a Raptor engine in um, blender and put it into real image next to a real Raptor engine and honestly it took me like 10 minutes to understand that this wasn't a real engine um, and you the only thing where you could see it was in the pipe work which was a little bit too clean but other than that it was so mind-blowingly good um, that I just you know I, I just felt okay we have to talk about this anyhow as you can see I'm putting down all these different things um, and we're going to talk about this more now in the real-time part in a couple of seconds I hope you enjoyed the voiceover so far today and um, yeah can't wait to talk you through in the real-time part and then for the last episode we see each other next time. So, thank you so guys so much for watching till this point and now enjoy the real time part. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the real-time part, or welcome to the real-time part, I should say, of episode number 11. So the second last episode as we uh, have talked through, and you can see this is the entire overview so far. And here are some very beautiful workshop elements that I've used, so you can see this little wind wheel. I gotta love it, this is just so, so dang cool made, uh, very well made with all these little iron pieces creating that wheel. And uh, as I said, you know, there's just not much more I could do better, so why not using this piece? And it just fits so well in here. Then I took these grand silos over here. Um, they look fantastic as well, uh, even though they're just like the in-game pieces mostly. Um, but it just looks 
absolutely gorgeous uh, with these gutters going down here and then these little um, access points with where you can you know uh, let the grain come out and and fill them into uh, your whatever wagons you're using um, but I think it just looked very neat indeed and then we have the little playground over here um, I, I kind of love the usage of the pathing path like this um, you know these kind of rubber mats you have on, on playgrounds to make it a little bit more safer for kids and then again it's not really safer it's actually more making the, 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 the legs burn and stuff like that but I still loved it um, and I used it because it looks kind of cool and I'm still figuring out how to make something else like this um, uh, below these little um, swings here so that's kind of neat as well and um, yeah it's just like a very nice area in general and like a little sandbox over here and I don't know it's just I, I like this area I imagine um, I will also put down some more picnic benches here let me just do a little moonwalk here it's actually a shiver walk I guess but whatever um, and then in here you have like another seating area and I, I would think if it's too hot in the summer or it's a rainy day you can still sit in here um, grab your stuff and I imagine that this could be like the restaurant and stuff you know it, I mean it's, it's the quarantine but still uh, could be used as such and then we have the little uh, this thing is also still looking insanely incredible I remember having seen that in Beezy's um, farm we have visited weeks ago actually this this one looks uh, fantastic with all the pipe work and all the kind of little details here and there um, just phenomenal work and again I just uh, used that one since it's just looking too good and we put like another wind wheel in here and just some some pieces in here and there we have the little um, insect hotel which is also pretty nice uh, very well done and I put them down and we will use some more of these items because there are some cool ones on the workshop uh, for the last episode um, the work we have to do is down here by the street make a little parking lot and then this project is mostly done I really hope you guys enjoy it if you do let me know in the comments down below and um, we see each other in the next one so uh, stay safe everyone and I talk to you in the next one